The Walking School Bus is an organised group of children who walk along a designated route to school under adult supervision. They are dropped off and picked up at designated bus stops, Walking School Bus bus stops along the way. Hazard ID for route establishment, or HIRE as we call it for short, it starts at the beginning whenever a new walking school bus starts. So Auckland Transport checks the route and makes sure that it is safe and that any pedestrian hazards are reported and rectified before the bus starts. A hazard is any sort of uh, safety risk to uh, the walking school bus or pedestrians. An example would be a cracked footpath with the lip, or it could be a trip hazard, overhanging branches could potentially block visibility and um, sneaky driveways. The hazards are identified and reported back to Auckland Transport um, and then the engineers have a look at them and get them rectified if possible to make the route safer. So once the route has been made safe, the parents will be walking it every day, so it's really their responsibility then to report any new hazards on the route and to keep the route maintained. It's important to uh, identify hazards so that you can make the walking school bus route as safe as possible. It's a good idea really to involve the kids to look for the hazards as well. It's also a little activity that you can give them. Maybe every three or four months have a day when we're going to see if there's any new hazards on our route and then they can be aware of their surroundings as well. The ratio for the walking school bus is eight children to one adult. And having said that, preschoolers walking along are included in the eight, but preschoolers in the pram we don't count. If you have nine children, it's really best to start a waiting list and wait until you find another parent, because when you do find another parent, then you can have 16 children on the bus. Auckland Transport provide quite a few resources to help parents run and organise their walk-in school buses and one of those is the pledge. The walk-in school bus pledge for kids' behaviour is a pledge that we get kids to sign so that it helps us, it's a tool that Auckland Transport provides us with and it helps us to have that agreement to manage kids' behaviour. We let local residents know about the walk-in school bus by putting a lookout for kids flyer in everyone's mailbox along that route. Um, it's important so that residents are aware that there is a walking school bus going past their driveway, for example if they're reversing out of a driveway in the morning. If you're one parent with eight children, the best thing to do is you try and keep them on the high side of the footpath and the parent walks on the curb side of the footpath. The thing you don't want to happen, you don't want to let them run on ahead of you, or you don't want to let them drag way behind you. So that's why you try and keep them in a bunch right beside you on the high side of the footpath. There's two drivers then, that's better still, because you can have one driver in the front and one driver at the back. Walking school buses really should give way to other pedestrians, especially if it's a narrow footpath and it's really just stepping aside and letting the pedestrians pass. If they can keep walking, that's fine, but they may need to stop. A sneaky driveway is a driveway that has hedges, trees or a fence at the end of it, which means that when the resident is reversing out of the driveway, they actually can't see the footpath. Parents would go on to the Auckland Transport website and report it online, giving all the details. And they say it's a walking school bus route as well. And also if it's a safety issue, they can say it's a safety issue. When you report a hazard on the Auckland Transport website, you'll get a confirmation email and then you can follow up anytime on that, on that hazard report. So the hazards are identified and reported back to Auckland Transport and then the engineers have a look at them and get them rectified if possible to make the route safer. When you're crossing without a crossing, if you're one parent with eight children, you stop at the safe place to cross, you get the kids organised in a bunch, you check for traffic and then you cross when it's safe. You cross quickly, but you don't run. In a larger group, again, it's, it's the bunching up. It's so that you cross the road in a block, so that's the main thing. So you get everyone organised to go, then you check for traffic, 
then someone can say cross now and cross quickly again but don't run. With a refuge island, it is really important that you don't overload the refuge island. If you can wait and cross the road without stopping, that would be best. If that's not possible, you take a small group of children into the middle of the road, wait in the refuge island and then continue when the way is clear. You may need more parents to do this, as you shouldn't leave a group of children on their own. crossing at a pedestrian crossing you stop and wait for traffic to stop the best thing to do is get eye contact so that you know the traffic is stopped and then you cross quickly and don't run when you're crossing at traffic lights when the green man comes up and the buzzer goes you should always check to make sure that the traffic is stopped before stepping out and then you cross quickly but don't run. It's a good idea to actually teach the children this as well because it is a life skill that they'll always remember. For more information just go along to the Auckland Transport website and search for walking school buses.